Hi everybody and welcome to this lesson on launching our first EC2 instance. So I've already logged into our console which I showed you in the last lesson how you can go ahead and get your account created for free. So once we're logged in we want to go ahead and click on services and in the compute section we're so once we select EC2 it takes us to our EC2 dashboard. Now this provides us a host of information regarding EC2s on the top for the resources we can see how many instances we have running any dedicated hosts volumes elastic IPs snapshots load balancers and so on towards the bottom you can see service health it gives you status of the health of the region that you're currently in if you guys see on the top right I'm currently in London so you can see there's a green checkbox next to London meaning that London is in good service health and the availability zones within this region EU West you can see that there are three availability zones within this region and if you guys remember a region can have two or more availability zones so this region in London has three availability zones EU West 2A, 2B and 2C and all of them are in good health so we can also go here to see if any region or any availability zone is not in good health because if we have any mission critical instances or apps running in specific regions we can see and mitigate any risks that might arise if a region is down or if an availability zone is down. What we want to do is go ahead and launch our instance and once we select launch our instance it takes us through a pretty robust wizard in getting our instance up and running. So the first step is choosing an AMI or Amazon machine image. So these are basically images that Amazon has created and are available for us to use that have pre-built OS and applications on top. So there are a host of images that are pre-built Linux based, Red Hat based, and towards the bottom also Windows based, Windows Server based and so on. So we can go ahead and select which image suits best our use case. For example, if you want a Windows server that has Microsoft SQL Server pre-installed on it, we can go ahead and select these. So there are a host of images that are already pre-built by Amazon for us to use. Also on here on the left hand side, there's an option for My AMIs. Now if your organization has created images, they would show up here. So if there are any specific machine images that are created for your organization that are pre that are pre-populated with some specific apps or configurations they will show up here so you can go ahead and select those and launch that instance and most organizations have their own customized AMIs that they've uploaded on AWS that they use on a regular basis and then there's also the AWS marketplace this is where you can go ahead and buy any software that runs on the AWS cloud from various vendors such as SAP, Microsoft, and so on. So we can go ahead and find and launch our software directly within the EC2 from this marketplace, whether it's Juniper, Barracuda, Trend Micro. So I suggest you guys go ahead and just browse through this section and see what all different softwares are available in the marketplace for you to use. And they're also broken up by specific industry sections. So if you're in the healthcare or financial services, you can find those specific softwares also here also. So it's a very, very robust system that AWS has created in terms of launching EC2 instances. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and launch a basic Linux system. And here are all of the different types of EC2 instances that are available with this AMI. Now it gives you some basic information regarding the hardware of these instances. For example, the CPUs, the memory, the storage, the performance and whether it supports IPv6 or not. So there's a host of different options that are available. Now for the cloud practitioners exams you do not need to know these specific instances that are available for example what T2 or T3 stand for or what M or C stand for. They are just different hardware platforms that Amazon offers based on specific use cases. Some are optimized for CPU usage, some are optimized for memory usage, some are optimized for GPU usage. So it just depends on what type of applications and what type of use you will be doing for this EC2 instance that will determine what type of hardware will be required. 
Now for the purposes of this demonstration and since we are in a free tier, I'm going to go ahead and stick with this free tier eligible one. Now just keep in mind that for the first 12 months following today's date is when I signed up for the account, we get up to 750 hours of micro instances each month. If so, if we go above that, that's when they start charging us for using it and they are charged on an hourly basis. So just keep that in mind and again that's why setting up those billing alarms is very important especially if you're going to be testing and playing around within the AWS platform. It's very good and smart to set those billing alarms because sometimes when you get too involved you lose track of time and how much you've actually used these instances for during your testing phase. So after that on the bottom we have several options. I can either review and launch from right here. So it will launch my instance based on this or I can go ahead and configure some additional information. I just want to show you guys the screens that are available and the options that are available if we go ahead and do that. So here we can select any number of instances that we want to launch whether it's 1, 5, 10, whether we want to launch any spot instances and if you guys remember spot instances are based on availability. So here we can select what type of price we want to bid. So once that price is reached, these instances will be launched. If the price goes above that, these instances will be terminated. The network, this is where we can go ahead and select the VPC that we want to launch this instance into. And again, a VPC is a virtual private cloud. I will discuss that towards the end of this course. There is one VPC that's created for you by default, so we're just going to stick with that. Placement groups, capacity information, IAM role, which I will discuss next. Those are basically just your user accounts and your groups. Monitoring, and again, I will go through these when we come to CloudWatch or when we come to monitoring and IAM. I will discuss these, but this is where we can go ahead and configure that when we're launching our EC2 instance. And if you want some quick information, there is the I right next to the name. If we click on that, it gives you some basic information. Let's say if you want to know what a placement group is. If we forgot, we can go ahead and click here and it'll give us a brief information in terms of what is a placement group, which is so basically what you're doing is grouping a set of EC2 instances together. So if one fails, the other one will take over. And towards the bottom, we also have an option for advanced details. Now this is where bootstrapping comes into play. Let's say if we want our instance to go ahead and update certain softwares or apply certain patches when it's booted up, we can go ahead and paste that information here. We can also select the different storage that we want to add. If you want to add additional volumes, again, the root volume comes with it. And we've, we can also change what type of volume we want. We can also add tags to our group. And a tag is basically a label that you assign to a resource and each tag consists of a key and an optional value, both of which we can define. And they basically enable us to categorize our AWS resources in different ways, for example by purpose, by owner, or by environment. So let's say if you want to have a certain group of EC2 instances that's only used by finance, we can tag those as finance for the finance department or ops for the operations department. So it's just a way for us to go ahead and group our EC2 instances if they're going to be used by certain departments or certain groups. And the last option that we are able to configure for the EC2 instance before launching it is the security group and the security group is basically the firewall of your EC2 instance. Now when I get into VPC we'll discuss security groups and the access control list but just keep in mind this is where we can go ahead and configure the security groups for our EC2 instance. Whether we want to create a new group, select an existing group. So I want to leave everything as default for this one and go ahead and review and launch my instance. So before launching it, get, it allows us to review everything that we've selected. If we've modified anything, if we want to go ahead and change anything we can go ahead and do that. But I'm going to leave everything as default and go ahead and launch my instance. Now when I click on launch it takes us to this screen that allows us to create our key pair, both a public and a private key. So if you have an existing key, you can go ahead and choose that here. Or you can go ahead and create a new key pair or proceed without a key pair. Now since I already have a key pair, I'm just going to go ahead and use that. And just as a reminder, a key pair is basically going to be used if we're going to be connecting to our Linux machine through SSH. So here we have it, we're back into our EC2 instances section and you guys can see that it's 
launching our instance for us it takes a few minutes for the instance to launch and once that's launched it will show up here as active and towards the bottom we can see the different information for this instance in terms of the public DNS the public IP and a private IP and if you guys remember an EC, each EC2 instance has both a public IP and a private IP along with a public DNS that's used to access this EC2 instance. Additionally, we can check the status of our EC2 instance. We can set alarms, which is what CloudWatch is used for, and I'll discuss that when we discuss CloudWatch. Monitoring just gives you a basic health check or a resource monitor for your EC2 instance. And again, we can also create alarms for those, and that's discussed when I talk about CloudWatch. And then here is where we can see the tags that we've added and we can go ahead and add or edit tags after the fact also. So if we forgot to tag this instance for the finance department we can do go ahead and do that here or if an EC2 instance is switching departments we can go ahead and edit those tags here. So that's it. Uh, it's a pretty simple process in order to launch our EC2 instance. 